I will now turn my attention to the uh, panelists that I have in front of me here. I would say a very, very solid panel, a diverse panel. Uh, and I think in the interest of, of you know, having sort of a flow to, to the engagement, I would like to first allow your platform to have some first initial remarks on, on the report itself. Uh, I think perhaps also reflecting within that the importance of having this engagement. You know, I started off in the media when I was about 17, 18 years old, just straight out of um, high school. And the AMB has always been one of those stable resources uh, that I've used along the work of uh, produced by the APPR and others. Uh, and I really want to just urge you now, I know that many people have been saying there's a bit of a decline in support for some of these reports and so on. I just wanted to urge on the FES before we start with the panel discussion. Please continue the work that you're doing uh, with the AMB. Uh, before we start the panel discussion, just a quick house uh, in-house announcement. There is a master vehicle uh, registration number 23808, whose windows are still open. So uh, the team has just urged you, please, if it's your vehicle, please go close the windows, 23808. Many of the crimes are opportunity crime. Uh, so that opportunity presents itself if the windows of your vehicle are not closed. Well, for now, let's get straight into it. And I think start off first with the reflections. Uh, I would like to start with Mr. Frederico Links immediately in as far as your initial uh, reactions to, to the report and the results uh, that came out from this report before we go deeply into each sector individually. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Ricardo. Um, I'm wearing a mask because I have a, I have a cough, which is a prolonged condition. And I'm trying to figure out what exactly is causing it. So I'm... Uh, doing this for your protection. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right. Um, yes. Um, I think, you know, the, the, the long-term trends um, that, that come out of this edition of the AMV, um, you know, it, it sort of emphasizes things that have, uh, that have played out on the media sector. And, and, I mean, if you look at what journalists point to, what the panelists pointed to over the years, over the last decade and so on, and things that are emergent at the moment. Um, you'll see the trends are sort of in keeping. Um, and, and I mean, it, it's, it, it looks like a mixed bag, but uh, on the whole, it, 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 isn't, it isn't a trend that uh, will ultimately be a positive trend, I think. Um, it, it, at some point, you know, it either has to, uh, uh, you know, make a curl upwards, uh, uh, positive, or it has to dip and become a negative trend. And I think it, it, if you look at various indicators, it is tending more towards, towards the negative. Um, and, you know, we're all casting about for how do we, how do we arrest the situation? I mean, there are some recommendations made and responsibilities uh, um, sort of uh, given to various organizations and, and, and so on. And, and that's all good and well. Um, but I think the confluence of factors that are undermining our media sector, and it's not just Namibia, of course. There are other countries in the region, other countries in the world where this is also playing out. The confluence of factors, I think, um, make a individual organizational attempt to address them uh, to too big a task. And, and, it, it, and it isn't the one thing that fixes anything. Um, there's too much happening and too much continuing to happen and too much happening beyond the, the, the scope of our media ecosystem that will continue to impact on, on our on, on, on what's happening in our media sector. Now, a lot of what I'm saying might sound a bit vague and so on, but I mean, if you look at the report, um, if you read the, the report, um, you'll sort of notice that there are things that really, um, really should strike you, and there are a number of things being mentioned. And I think the, the law and policy and, and, and regulation making in, in, in the digital space, ultimately, from next year onwards will have a very big impact on the future of um, you know, the, the online sustainability of Namibian media, um, especially news media. 
and especially investigative journalism in this country, um, which already is sort of a niche um, a journalistic enterprise in, in, in Namibia. Um, one of the issues I have with the report is that it, it throughout refers to the NBC as a public broadcaster. NBC is not a public broadcaster, it's a state broadcaster. So I mean, I, I think that's something that has to be corrected in, in future editions. Um, NBC does not have a public broadcasting charter. It does not have, uh, it, it is not uh, have an independent board. And even though in December 2020 it was awarded, it was, Cran did give it a public broadcasting license. I don't think it has lived up to that license. So I, I do have an issue with that, with uh, the, the NBC being referred to throughout as a public broadcaster, which it is not. Um, but other than that, I think the, as I said, the, the, the substantive issues, the, the issues that affect uh, individual journalists, the reason why a union was founded um, and established, um, the, the, you know, the, the well-being and, 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 and the, not just uh, financial, but also in terms of, of mental health aspects um, and, and other health aspects of, of, of journalists, of media workers, um, really you know, has come to a point where, where um, they, they really need to be addressed. Um, the aspects around uh, um, economic sustainability, I mean, that's something that, that uh, you know, did not start with COVID. COVID exacerbated a situation that has been uh, prolonging since, uh, you know, for most of the last 10 years from about 2015, 16. And that's because of the economic situation in the country. The country went into a steep uh, economic decline from about the second quarter of 2016. And this, of course, affected advertising and marketing budgets and so on, which affected, um, has affected and continues to affect media houses and has been exacerbated by, by the, 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 the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and I speak from, from experience in this regard. I was a shareholder and, and, and editor of, of Insight Namibia magazine. Um, which, which is a media product which you know, I was very proud of, and Tangeni was the previous shareholder um, in that. And I think it, it had a place in this market, in this media market. But one of the main factors at the end was we couldn't keep it going because advertising had dried up by 2018, 19. Um, it wasn't economically sustainable um, to keep going. We you know, had to make less and less uh, uh, do with less and less, and it just couldn't continue at some point. Um, now that wasn't the only factor, but but that was the main factor that that closed us down. Um, even though it it really was a, a niche media product that could have had a future if conditions had been different. That said, um, you know the the as, as I started off saying, I think. Um, there's a lot there for us to, to discuss, and I, and I really would like to you know, hear what others have to say about those who've read the report, um, and then you know, uh, there are issues to debate as well. Thank 100%, you very much. 100%, thank you. Uh, Jemima, of course, practicing journalist. Uh, obviously, you will be on the panel speaking for, for, for the room of journalists that are, that are represented here, but your immediate reflections on you know, the report, uh, the report coming out and the need for having this sort of information available, data, uh, particularly not only for, for editors, but also for journalists that are working on the ground uh, with the citizens. One, two, oh, okay, I am there. Uh, I have to disappoint you. I am not going to speak as long, uh, at length as uh, Frederica has. I'm a um, woman of few words. <laughs> but yeah, um, as, he has, uh, um, as he's pointed out that um, Yes, we've seen it tip to, uh, in certain, um, in certain areas it is tipped to the positive, in certain areas it is tipped to the negative. And um, it is very important, as much as we pride ourselves, as um, uh, Ms. Emily said earlier, and even Ms. Fryer, that we are a trailblazer in Namibia in terms of free, uh, press freedom, that we have 
something that holds us accountable, which is now the uh, barometer. Uh, because uh, we've also seen uh, that, um, like he's also, um, also by the way, I am representing the um, first ever media uh, media union, Namibia uh, Professionals Media Union, which was born out of these um, challenging uh, conditions that journalists are um, working under, which is one of the um, what is the uh, those indicators? Um, one of the indicators that was mentioned there, where we actually. Um, uh, fared relatively well, but even so, um, as much as Namibia, yes, um, we are doing fairly well, but there are s s serious issues that need to be addressed. Um, the issue of um, um, uh, compensation, that, that is still a major issue. You will still find in leading newsrooms where people take it for granted that because uh, people have a, um, a reputation for years, people assume that these people are treated very well, but they are oftentimes not. Um, those are issues that need to be addressed. Perhaps uh, uh, legislation should be looked into um, since the minister is here. Um, um, so the, um, and also mental health issues um, that we have now seen. People are uh, somehow taking it serious. <coughs> the, um, in the past, you dared not say a word. And um, for some time, uh, people have seen journalists and, and almost um, uh, just uh, well, there was this picture out there: the journalists are alcoholics because at uh, most events that they were, um, and yet they were uh, under they are under so much pressure that uh, they end up self-medicating with alcohol. And uh, yes, you are laughing, but these are the realities. And we have we have normalized it. We are laughing at it, uh, but these are things that need to be taken very seriously because we are losing brilliant journalists because of these issues that are not, number one, they're not addressed, number two, they are, uh, people are just, I don't have time for you, I'd rather get four interns to replace a brilliant journalist who's gonna give you four proper, five proper stories in a day, um, and the intern is gonna give you scrapes, and it compromises at the end of the day quality of information. So yeah, I, I believe that um, as much as Namibia is do, doing fairly well, um, uh, reports like the Afrobarometer is of utmost important for us to hold up a mirror to us every uh, five years, whenever it comes to every, years, yeah, every, yeah, so that we know this is where we are lacking. Because obviously, I believe Namibia is signatory to so many laws, so Namibia is definitely committed. We've seen it. Yeah? As much as we've seen uh, um, us taking a few steps backward, um, we, uh, there is a commitment from some sectors that we would like to do certain things better. Um, so yeah, those are my few words. I think from an editor's perspective, it's always a, a, a different lens that you have the balance, of course, the interest of, of, of your working force, uh, also considering uh, the, the business of media as well. Uh, the, the, Mr. Mupane, what were your initial re reactions and, and responses, of course, to the, 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 the results of uh, the barometer? Um, uh, first, I should... Uh... Uh, declare that I was part of the panelists who compiled this report. So a lot of it didn't surprise me. But what I would love to share with the public is uh, how rigorous and how much we differ among ourselves during uh, the compact of this report. So even, even with me having seen the, the compiled uh, document, um, I'm actually surprised at the scores, despite having had an appreciation of, of that discussion that yeah. went in there. Um, and I think part of it is it's really an issue of how complex um, an, an environment news media is operating these days. Um, you mentioned from an editor's point of view, having to balance survival of an institution uh, versus uh, the public service. The mandate. public service versus even just uh, paying paying journalists what they want to be paid. So this this balance uh, these issues are really not as straightforward as sometimes we think. I mean, sometimes it looks like there's money, the institution is making money and therefore why don't you pay your journalists? Meanwhile, the, there's so much else that comes in the way. Um, 
not only the Namibian um, economic, uh, the, the, the economy that has literally gone down, but you also find that internationally, the digitization, how it has changed the media landscape so much that it's, it's so tricky, it becomes so difficult. The, the sources of survival, advertising for instance, you will see it a lot now on the Googles and Facebooks of this world. So it's not just that the Namibian economy has gone down, is that the model that used to uh, keep us going, the business model, has also changed. That the sources of income, the traditional sources of income have dropped, and we have to adjust. So we have to find a balance between investing in new uh, business model, growing that new business model. Of course, there's always a lag between that and, and the survival of the media um, institution. My biggest concern is in between, because I'm not so worried that news media will always uh, be needed. Journalists, strong journalists will always be needed. In fact, they are needed much more now than before, because um, now journalists have to play that interpreter role, that role of making it easy for people to digest information uh, in a world where you can more or less get information anywhere at any time. Um, and very often people don't even know whether the information that they are getting is correct. And they just, they just assume, they consume it. Um, one simple example I came across recently while in a taxi is how the taxi driver was praising Russia for clobbering the Ukrainians. <laughs> it's good that they need to be killed. Why did they decide to be, to be on the side of the Americans? And for me, it was so sad that uh, it's not so long ago that Namibia itself had to decide to fight for its freedom. Besides, Russia and Ukraine were, were on the same side not so long ago. I mean, 30, a bit, little over 30 years ago, they were one country. So us so far away, instead of actually looking at this situation and just be in solidarity, at least with the, the vulnerable people, that we basically choose side based on Russia and the USA, it's, it's sad. It also tells me that we need many more people who can interpret the essence of what is going on in our lives. Um, for me, a needless war is causing us a lot of harm, even in Namibia. We feel it in our fuel uh, costs, we feel it in the shops, yet a lot of uh, human beings are just consuming this news without so much of a thought as what is, what are really the issues. So um, I think and, uh, the Afrobarometer, because it touches so much on and many topics, including sustainability, that is where it really matters. Mm -hmm. And I hope uh, a, lot, a lot of us can make use of it for a long time. Of course, on, on, on this, uh, Mr. Ngitila, I think uh, you're probably going to have one of the more difficult tasks today when we open up the floor, uh, representing um, the government here. Of course, you have to balance between creating that conducive environment. We, at the same time, want media to self-regulate. At the same time, we also want to make sure that uh, the rights of everybody within the, within, within the, the infrastructure is, is, is pro uh, protected. What were your initial uh, reactions to, to, to the AMB and some of the uh, results and, and, and findings? Um. Yeah, thank you, colleagues. Um, the initial reaction was, um, I think uh, the ministry issued a, a press release through the office of the ED, 
and I'm happy that uh, my ED is here. I'm safe. <laughs> <laughs> so we really are proud at the. Oh, by the, the way, the, 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 the ED has been upgraded to uh, status of minister for the night by uh -huh. Jemima. So. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we have indicated our satisfactions of mm. the report. Mm. Of course, as government, uh, we will continue to create a conducive environment for the media to be able to, to do their business. Um, I have been listening to colleagues, uh, in, particularly when it comes to condition of services. It's true there might be a need for some policy interventions and regulations. But again, government doesn't want to be seen dictating this, the media space. That's why uh, so far, so good, we continue to be guided by Article 21 of the Namibian Constitution. Of course, of course, in tandem with uh, Article 144 that ties all media practitioners, not only in Namibia but elsewhere in the world. So we're quite uh, satisfied that the report uh, could be used as a self-introspection, particularly the media uh, practitioners. They need to really uh, 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 get organized in a way that uh, uh, they live up to the current environment that requires a lot of innovations, considering the digitations of, of the media space. Things have changed completely. But if you don't play relevant to your readership particularly, you, you, you might end up uh, losing uh, that kind of uh, space. So it's important that uh, media uh, stay relevant, media scale the environment consistently in ensuring that they stay up with the changing uh, environment, not only in Namibia, but elsewhere in the world, because the world has changed, things have changed, and it's no more business uh, as usual. So I think for us, the, 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 the barometer, it's, it's an indication that we need to do more than what we are doing now. The, and, and the use of social media, for instance, by, by our, our, our news media houses um, is, is, you know, is, is, is oftentimes very cringeworthy. So we, we haven't yet transitioned into the digital space adequately and appropriately um, as news media in this country. If you look at how other, uh, how, how the online space is being used by journalists and media organizations in other parts of the world, Namibia is, is taking child steps here. So you're saying basically that the, the quality yeah. of what is being provided online, uh, on, online to the audience yeah. I mean, it, is it, linked to the, the it, revenue it is, yes. I mean, all of this is linked. I mean, uh, 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 this is a confluence. Uh, there's a confluence of factors here. Um, and um, one, of the, one of my personal criticisms um, that I saw during the COVID-19 pandemic from very early on was that Namibian, a lot of Namibians were getting their COVID-related uh, information on social media. And, and, and the Namibian news media were not in that space countering the disinformation that, uh, that their audiences or or, or potential audiences, especially young people, were encountering in, on social media. Um, very late in the game, in 2021, you know, um, some news organizations started actually actively engaging with, with disinformation online, COVID-19 related disinformation, and disinformation in general. Um, but for the whole of 2020, you had the situation where um, the news media was not where their audiences were. And, and, and people were, I mean, I spoke to people and they were saying to things to me like, um, I'm sorry, Mr. Lynx, we uh, don't believe the journalists anymore. We, uh, I'm, I, I don't want to hear about what the journalists have to say. And this reflects what's happened in other parts of the world as well um, around COVID-19. But it has, it, has, it has translated into other areas of the media environment. And this is a, this is a sustainability question. Because if you look at, you know, you, 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 you take the, Af the African media barometer and you look at it in conjunction with, for instance, the Afro barometer. 
and see what the public says about the media. In the eighth round of Afrobarometer in 2019, before, before COVID-19, the perception of Namibians was that journalists were less trustworthy than politicians. Don't say it out loud. Journalists were less trustworthy. I'm going to say it again. Journalists were less trustworthy, according to the public, than politicians. Journalists were, uh, uh, in Afrobarometer, you can go and look it up right now. It's online. Um, journalists were uh, uh, the number one, were identified as the number one source of the question was asked about fake news. The number one source of fake news. That's what the public thinks of Namibian journalists. Now that, you take the African me media barometer, you take the Afro barometer, you look at them together and get a picture. That's a sustainability question. Because your future markets think that you are not credible as, as, as news organizations, as media organizations. So they, they, they will not become uh, 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 um, uh, consumers of your media products, and and in in a in a in a in in an ecosystem uh, that more and more is driven by by data, by metrics, by engagement, and, and these sorts of things, um, you know, where advertisers look at these aspects, and and they see that um, you know. Um, you aren't, uh, you, you aren't enticing readerships, you aren't attracting new eyeballs and so on, um, then what, what happens? The MTCs take their money to Google. The banks take their money to, to Google. You, you open up a, a random website, and there's bank went to trying to sell you something. The advertising dollars mm -hmm. are moving in that direction. Now, there's a lot. I mean, I'm, I'm being very, very uh, adopting a very doomsayer perspective here, but you know this is this this is a reality that the Namibian uh, news media and journalistic media needs to look in the uh, eye. But Tangeni, I want you to quickly come in there as well. I think uh, sitting in the position that you're sitting in as as as, as an editor. Do you agree with those with those assertions? Of course, obviously the results are there, as as, Fred, uh, as Rodrigo is saying, you know the untrustworthiness in in in, the, in journalists, but more so the product that's being put online is not up to standard. Uh, that's one question. But of course, the other one is also: Are those that provide that revenue to you, the corporates, also coming to the party? Are they also understanding uh, that shift that's happening from the traditional media into digital media, and are they willing to to back their daughter? What's your experience? Um, this, the, I, I wouldn't question the research because generally people will say what they feel and that's more, more or less what they feel. Um, but you, you have to appreciate that this, the research would have generalized. So the, the, in general, and I think Everywhere around the world, or in most many places around the world, there are a substantial number of people who don't want to believe in what the media is giving them. No matter, and I think, uh, no matter how, how much you would want to convince Trump's people um, to, to look at the New York Times, they wouldn't. They, they just don't care. And, and I think it's, those are similar things here. Until, until the fish rod stories of this world come out, uh, where people can see, suddenly can, uh, can, can connect how a few people were becoming so rich and others losing their jobs, only through those, that kind of work would we regain our our um, credibility? So it's not it's not a straightforward thing. I think uh, as as uh, Frederico seems to want to be simplistic, that it's it's the journalists who are failing to reach their their future audiences. There are a lot of factors. There are really a lot of factors, intricate factors at play. Um, 
and you would see on <coughs> WhatsApp groups, the Namibian gets stolen and shared all the time. So there must be a good reason, I would think, why some people do that. Uh, unfortunately, it comes at the expense of sustaining the Namibian because the, the very people who would say they don't believe in media, they would still want to access that same news, but without paying, paying for it or without helping to, to sustain those, those journalists. So I, I think there's, there's a lot at play that we uh, would um, have to deal with for a long time to come, just because of many things, the economy, the Namibian economy, the digitization, the world economy, the, just uh, a lot of factors. Mm. I would also just like to urge on uh, our viewers that are joining us on the live stream on the FS Media page, as well as uh, on the Namibians' uh, social media platforms, to please uh, punch in those questions. We will provide a platform for those questions to be responded to. My audience here as well, after this one question that I want to ask to uh, the uh, Director uh, for Print Media Affairs at MICT, I would also open up the platform for you as well. So I hope you're ready uh, for that engagement. We, we've seen... Um, Mr. Gitila, that we've scored quite... I think for me, I was very surprised to see the scores that we received in Sector 1 and Sector 2. Uh, that Because I would like to think, in as far as you know, the law is concerned, and I think one of the positives perhaps that didn't come out was the issue around uh, the passing of the Access to Information Bill uh, still to be promulgated. Uh, but you know, we've seen... I would like to believe, really, that when it comes to the issues around law and regulation, that we are quite, you know, in a solid position in the country, but the 2.4 and 2.5 for sector one and sector two uh, seems to be attributed to uh, what they're saying here as a negative development, one of the ones that we pointed out, the increasing harassment of journalists and civil society by the state. What are your reflections on this? Because this is one of the, the, the biggest negative developments that are coming out from, from, from the report. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> that remains a uh, perception. Um, you don't agree with that perception? Uh, well, uh, everybody's entitled, uh, but we know our situation. Uh, I would say from 2018 onwards, Namibia has been ranked as number one, uh, as the freest uh, press in, 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 in Africa, number one, and um, uh, uh, occupying, um, I think, uh, the, the uh, 20th position around or over the world. And for us, those rankings, they, they count, and uh, we look at them uh, seriously. When particularly uh, 2017, uh, Ghana, I think, took over as the, the number one uh, press, uh, I mean, freest press in Africa, we took a, a position that we will regain uh, our number one score uh, uh, in Africa. And uh, we, 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 we committed ourselves and, and, and we, we managed to, to retain uh, our number one. Uh, this year um, we are to overtaken by, uh, I think, uh, CISELs. CISEL, because, simply because they deregulate uh, the, the defamation law. I think that counted very well on their part. But still our position is we will continue to to advocate for, for that number one position in Africa. Uh, saying that, um, well, uh, I, we have seen, particularly when there are demonstrations, and I think that is, is something that media uh, houses has to really take uh, up seriously. You have journalists, instead of wearing their jackets or their identification cards, they are also part of the demonstration. Uh, we have seen it in a number of occasions. And when uh, either they are arrested, and this when they say, I'm a journalist. But the, what they were doing, it's not necessarily the work of a journalist. Uh, what I'm saying is um, advancing uh, uh, free, independent, and pluralistic media. How independent it is, how pluralistic it is, how free it is, remains a question all the time because it depends on who is managing what. And most of our journalists, really, um, uh, at one point uh, when we were having some uh, discussions, we were thinking if we could maybe come up with a college or something 
where we could really train and retrain our journalists. Gone are the days when you have people like uh, my brother here, Tangeni. You, you could see even uh, the Namibian. You, you, I, I, I don't like uh, missing out. I must always buy my copy, you know, because they, they, they stay the course and they maintain that. But others also, I do, we do read. Uh, but what we are saying is uh, media should remain faithful to their readership. They should remain faithful to their, to their clientele, you know. Um, we are talking about the issue of sustainability. It's an issue of credibility. It's an issue of ethics. And if you go out of some of those principles, uh, chances are you lose out your customer. It's a rapport. It's, it's all about rapport if you want to remain relevant. And, and for those that are uh, expressing those sentiments, is their rights, but we know our situations. Just go outside Namibia, you know, and visit some countries elsewhere. So you say it's it could a journalist be, and you, you come back it should, and... It could be exaggerated. I, I would really think uh, these are people just trying to to play relevance in the media space. Uh, as far as we are concerned as government, we, we continue to create that conducive environment where our people continue to operate as, as, as media uh, practitioners in a spirit of free and independent uh, space where they are regulated by Article 21 of the Namibian Constitution. I would really think so. Well, I think uh, before I give it to, 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 to our audience, uh, Jemima has really been giving me a death stare while you're giving these responses. So Jemima, I just want to give you that platform. As a practicing journalist, what has really been your experience? Uh, honestly, are we, are, we, are we looking at a situation where journalists themselves also don't adhere to uh, 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 what they are supposed to do, such as wear the jackets, etc., as pointed out? Uh, 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 by Ms. Nangitila, or are we seeing uh, basically a little bit more aggression on the side of how things are being handled by law enforcement officers when it comes to, to journalists? Thank you, Ricardo. Um, we absolutely are seeing a, a more aggressive approach to the media by uh, the authorities. Um, and I see the uh, authorities are increasingly using that excuse that journalists are not appropriately dressed However, we've had instances, I for one, with a colleague from the Namibian, I was manhandled at an event where, I, where everybody knows us and where we were invited to. And we were even threatened when we walked out and we were told that you um, are lucky that you were not shot. How, is, how does that bode uh, for conduciveness? I would like to put to Mr. Ingetila. Um, then I would like to talk, uh, uh, take you to the um, mass demonstration protest at the Chinatown. NBC journalist, with his card identifying himself, was shot with a rubber bullet in the leg. So exactly how should they identify themselves? Um, another journalist with a jacket actually that says very, uh, very I mean, big, you've seen those jackets. The media, she too was attacked. Um, then I take you back to the shut it all down where in fact and the law um, uh, started uh, gaining prominence. The, uh, uh, the, one of the um, participants of the barometer report, um, even there the police was very aggressive towards the media. Um, so uh, in the past if you had gone somewhere it would, uh, you wouldn't think twice about taking your child along because Namibia is a free country. I actually at some point felt, I, came, I went there with my, I, I, I had picked up my five-year-old from school, and at some point, as much as we had told them we are journalists, they were just angry, the uh, special field forces. So at some point, I had to actually take my daughter back home to return and do my job, because, I mean, you don't know what can happen. That's certainly not a conducive environment. So these are facts. These are. So so I would some, like would, some would argue that I mean these are isolated incidents, and it might be an exaggeration to make a blanket statement, say the increasing um, harassment of journalists and civil society by the state. Well, I've, I've mentioned I think probably more than five. Uh, if you if we use mathematics and we are 2.5 million, how can that really be a generalized statement? How would that look like in a mathematic equation? 
Let's open up the platform for uh, the questions. Do we have any takers for now? If there are any questions online, I'm also just trying to see whether we have any questions on the online platforms. Again, to our audience, thank you so much for making time out to join us uh, on the live streams of both the Namibia newspaper as well as on the FES media. Your questions and comments are also welcome right now. Uh, do we have any takers? I see there's one hand there. Uh, can you please uh, take the mic to her? Do we have any more takers in terms of questions for the panel? And then I'll also, Mr. Nitin, I'll provide you with a platform to, 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 to give us a response to that as well. Just your, uh, the, your name uh, the, and the organization. My name is Liz, and I don't have an organization. Okay. <laughs> but I'm really curious to know, you said that there was quite intense debate around some of the indicators. Could you give an example of an indicator that required a lot of discussion and back and forth? I think that one goes to Tangeni. OK. Do you have another question? So if you don't have questions, then it means that you're doing quite well. Uh, Mr. Ngitila, let me allow you to just uh, reflect quickly. You wanted to say something, and then I'll give Tangani the platform to respond to that question. OK. Um, well, uh, uh, we have taken note of uh, what sister is talking about. Of course, uh, not uh, government uh, Oops. Yeah. Um, you shouldn't. Uh, I mean, you have to be mindful that the, in 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 a in a situation like that, uh, you must be able to differentiate between government policy and uh, individual actions. Um, those are isolated incidents, and I have, and we have been following them. And sometimes also it's a matter of uh, individuals involved. How well are they aware about protecting the rights of our journalists? And I think it's a matter, or it's an issue related to awareness and education. And I think that is something that we can always talk about. And also members of the media should also continue educating. Um, our people on how to behave and what is ought to happen and what is expected from them. As law uh, enforcement officers, they come from different uh, backgrounds and orientations, and I'm not here to defend those who were involved in such uh, actions, but uh, the point is the, that's not a state policy. There are situations where when you do your work, a government position is well known, and it's clear that this is what you need to do. So it's a matter of uh, how we educate our people, particularly the law enforcement officers, when they are attending to such kind of situations. Um, it's regrettable. We know it happened. But those are human errors and individuals that were involved. It's not a state position. Thank you. Tangani? Um, I think uh, uh, before I address, uh, answer the question, um, I, I think Mr. Nitila is uh, too much on the defensive. It's, these are not isolated incidents. What we are talking about is examples, plus the, that there is a pattern that has been occurring, especially over the past three, four years um, of hostility towards media, you, or, or even not just towards media, but towards free expression. Um, and and that, is, that is the test, really. How the, you t treat the public is, is a major test of whether the media is also free to do their, their work. We shouldn't, we shouldn't have to have journalists uh, marked on their forehead that I am a journalist so that I can be shot with a rubber bullet. Uh, demonstrators these days, in fact, the police has even recently announced is it, you have to pay a certain amount to organize, to, to organize a protest. So this, these are indicators, a pattern of what is happening. Um, as it is, there's still a cabinet decision, I think that was taken in 2015, to give preference 
to government funded media, both for news as well as advertising. That, when you talk about a conducive environment, already tells you there's, there's um, a government driven um, attitude towards free and independent journalism. All right, let me move on to addressing the issue of which, which areas. They, I think almost at every point, we, we really had uh, a rigorous debates and discussion. One of them is uh, about the state, or as I would prefer to call NBC, the government, government broadcaster. Um, are the journalists and editors there self-censoring self, uh, or are they being censored? So the debate went back and forth and um, I think you, you might see it in the, in the voting or in the scoring. They're saying here that the outcome, uh, the, the positive developments is that a level of editorial independence shown by the NBC. So this, the outcome from, from that uh, Rigorous engagement is that it has improved. Right. The, the, that's, that's also um, the general outcome. But if you look at the actual scoring, you would, you would see how, how widely the, the panelists differed um, in providing, providing those scores. Another is um, the editors versus editors and media owners versus the, the journalists, uh, the reporters on the ground, the um, camera people on the ground, the videographers, the people who do the, the legwork. So we differed quite a lot on their expectations versus what we, the editors and media owners, the, and the media owners are able to provide. Um, and I think Jemima can uh, bail me out on that in terms of, of details. Yes, um, colleagues, a platform like this one, for us as government, we are learning every day. It's not to say, um, I'm now again going back to my brother here, it's not to say I'm playing defense here. But what is important is we should understand what's the government policy and what individuals within probably government systems do to our people. I'm not defending what happened. Uh, but a platform like this, particularly us from Minister of Information, we use this kind of information to design campaign concepts on various interventions that we need to undertake with the various OMAs, particularly with colleagues from Minister of Home Affairs, Minister of Defense, to continuously engage them. And that's why, in many cases, we have a platform where we invite uh, uh, editors to, to meet with us to talk issues of common concerns and interest, with a view, of course, to correct the situation. And uh, we are happy that you are able to raise some of these issues. And we are taking note of what you are, what you are saying. Uh, getting back to my brother there, uh, citizens journalism, this is a new trend. And if it's not guarded properly, it it's tends to be misused. You should put yourself in a law enforcement uh, um, uh, situation where you have to save lives. So it's a lot of things that are involved. And uh, of course, education is one component that we are always emphasizing. So uh, we cannot say you are free to do your citizen journalism. Of course, you are guided by the Constitution. You have your, your constitutional rights. Your freedom is guaranteed. But how you do it, it's another, another issue that uh, maybe uh, reserve another debate. More so particularly the, the attitude of individuals sometimes, I'm not saying always, dictates to the kind of reaction they get. But I'm not here to speak on behalf of the law enforcement officers. But as from Minister of Information, it's our job to continuously engage the colleagues and tell them what is required when particularly when 
doing law enforcement exercises. Same with my colleague over there talking about the jackets, whether there is a policy or not. Well, each situation is dictated by what is happening. You have seen uh, journalists covering wars in Ukraine, um, where they are wearing their jackets at all times. And that is meant to protect journalists. It's not meant to say, if you are covering your news story, you are required to do A, B, C, D. But particularly when you are going to, pro uh, to demonstrations and protesters, you should be mindful of what is likely to happen in that situation. Uh, but I'm not uh, saying it's a government policy, but it's just a practice, it's just a good practice that's happening in the media space. Uh, same referring to Al Jazeera story, um, well, depends, because you use various techniques to get stories. Uh, and that is the profession that you are employed to do. Uh, as government, we are not saying, um, uh, when you are coming to me, you want to interview me. All I would require, of course, from you is to identify yourself from which news uh, outlets you're coming from. Other than that, of course, there are other various techniques you use to, to gather stories. But you are all overall guided by Article 21 of the Namibian Constitution. I think that's, that should be understood. But a platform like this, if I have to repeat, we use it to understand what is happening with a view to go and do homework and probably do some intervention mechanisms. I thank you. Tangeni, some questions that came your way as well. OK. Um, the one that came directly at me is the, um, the panelists who are journalists. Um, I think it only serves a better purpose when you have the industry players uh, look at, this, at these issues. Uh, the, the questions or the, the points that are, are being looked at are exactly about the conditions of media, the conditions in which media operate. So if you take only one journalist and or 10% of journalists on that panel and the rest are from other industries, you are, you are not likely to get uh, very strong day-by-day -day feedback. So I think there is a bias, but it's a positive bias. If I may uh, put it that way. Um, how do we get to a better score? Uh, by implementing some of the basic things. I mean, uh, Namibia has taken decades to just have um, legal instruments, policies that promote access to information, like this access to information laws. I don't know how many laws have come before Parliament. They were passed in no time. They were promulgated and carried out because it serves certain people's interests. Frankly, uh, this issue of Namibia being ranked so f uh, high as the freest, uh, having the freest news media in Africa, it's a ruse. For me, it's, it's it doesn't reflect the reality because a basic comparison with South Africa. South Africa has laws that forces the state institutions and private institutions actually to open up and provide, proactively provide information, not just to the media, but to the public. For me, that is a high test. That's a good high bar that I don't have to depend on my dear friend Audrin Mate as executive director to tell uh, Mr. Nitila here you can release that information to Tangeni or to a report to, or to, to a member of the public. It shouldn't be like that. We should proactively do what, what is right and then we, we can say we really are having an environment that is conducive to access to information, because that's really the issue. Ordinary people struggle, or let me actually put it the other way around. The reason 
why, or well, one of the reasons why Namibia has so few rich people and so many poor people is because the majority don't have easy access to information. The rich can easily meet, talk among themselves, submit that tender uh, application, and then they, they get it. The guys who are going to do their work are the poorer ones who don't have easy access to information. So these are, these are some of the things that we really need to work on. I think the one I really don't want to lose, uh, and, and, and I'm, in the interest of time, I'm afraid I'm not going to take any more questions. There's only one online question that I really want to um, ask there as well. But there was the issue around the pressure on journalists uh, to you know, meet deadlines, etc., for for the business uh, that could hamper them producing quality journalistic work or information. And if you can just quickly, briefly, very briefly, uh, uh, Federico, re reflect on that. Yes. Um... There's an issue that I don't think came through in 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 the report, and there's the issue of media capture, and this is something we've seen playing out on on the Namibian media landscape. This is a concern globally uh, in in the news media sector, um, where you have politically affiliated, associated, connected individuals opening up taking over um, um, news, media news media organizations. Now, we've seen that with a number of our uh, uh, m long-standing media organizations where politically affiliated and associated and the connected individuals have, have taken over these organizations. And some of them have, have been, they, they've been used um, quite, uh, I mean, I, I, I I've documented this, I've done research about this, it's available on the IPPR website. They've been used to disseminate um, or to try to be a counterbalance, uh, a countervailing voice to, for instance, the independent uh, 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 news media, um, to, to create confusion in the news media market, to create confusion within audiences about what is actually happening. Um, and, of course, then you have uh, uh, the dominance of, of the state media sector, um, which shies away from, from reporting on, uh, proactively on things like fish rot, for instance. Um, and so, so you, you, you have a, a media setup that is, that is ripe, that is full, that is being polluted by uh, um, uh, disinformation, political disinformation, um, and we've seen that around elections, and we're going to continue seeing that around our elections. Um, and um, so the, 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 the issue of media capture and its impact on the media environment um, is, is something that we have to start looking but others, at. Others would seriously. argue, though, uh, that Federico, that I mean that's what democracy provides. You know, we we in a diverse landscape. Anybody's. Can yes. get up and open a, a media house? That's true. That's mm. certainly true. But uh, you know, the, the, c certain aspects that the uh, engineering student at the back there raised. Um, you know, we are at a point where there has to be serious investment in media information literacy, and and specifically a, a component of news literacy, that people can discern between what is actually happening here on this? On, on, who is saying what? Who these actors are? What are, the, what, what are the messaging here? What are the narratives? What, what is the impact of framing? There's a lot happening. And I can hear from the questions. You know, there, there's, 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 there's a real need for media information literacy, for news literacy initiatives in this country, for it to be included in curricula from the earliest ages. So that I can know that if I'm reading a story from a certain newspaper, that you can this see ownership what, influences. Yeah, you can see where what is happening here, mm. and, and 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 I think that is something that that has to happen. I didn't see it. I might have missed it amongst the recommendations, but that is something that certainly I, I have been thinking about uh, working in the disinformation space, mm. and 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 the, and the fake news space have 
you know, the, the, we, we are way past time that there needs to media information literacy interventions at a national level. <sighs> yeah. Well, um, I think uh, those are some of the proposals that can always uh, be debated on. We continue engaging uh, with the Editors Forum of Namibia, uh, also Namibia Media Trust, and all other media houses. And the, such kind of ideas can always be uh, debated and at those platforms and see how and what is uh, feasible in that situation. Of course, as we have stated earlier, uh, media, uh, you know, is, is really faced with a lot of uh, challenges, but particularly the issue of sustainability. But again, at the same time, we, they, they really need to come up with uh, some uh, uh, contingencies as to how best they can uh, organize themselves to survive uh, under these economic difficulties and changing uh, media environment. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ngintila, for that intervention. On that note, I'd like to close off the panel. Can you please provide a warm round of applause to our panelists this evening? <laughs>